Okay, let's get started. Um, my name is Faiza El Mustahi. I am a project manager and social media strategist here at Shipple, the web marketing company in Houston, Texas. And I'd like to thank you for joining my Introduction to Twitter webinar. Um, this webinar is generally geared toward beginners, but I think all levels of Twitter users will be able to benefit in some way, shape, or form from this webinar. I'll be doing more advanced webinars in the future for Twitter, so if you have any suggestions after this webinar, I'd be happy to incorporate them in webinars to come. Um, just a little reminder, um, if you have a phone that can mute, go ahead and mute your phones. Um, questions are definitely um, accepted during the presentation, but if there's a lot of background noise, it's a bit um, distracting for everyone else listening in on the call. Okay, so we're going to talk about Twitter today. Um, so what are we going to talk about? Well, first we're going to discuss what Twitter is and what Twitter isn't. Then we'll go through the Twitter basics, such as how to set up an account, how to choose a screen name, how to understand the Twitter interface, and how to find and follow people. After you've got all that set up, we're going to talk about what the heck you actually do with Twitter. One of the biggest complaints I always hear is that, well, I've got my screen name, I've added some friends, I think I know what's going on here, but now what do I do? And that's because Twitter gives you absolutely zero direction in that regard, and for very good reason. And that it allows you to do a whole lot with Twitter. Um, so I'll help you answer those questions and figure out what happens after you've got everything set up. Next, we're going to talk about a few things that pop up on a regular basis, Twitter norms, if you will, that may throw the average new user for a loop. They're not really complicated. It's just part of the Twitter culture, and I'll help you understand those. Um, then we're, we're going to discuss some Twitter tools that'll make using Twitter a much more enjoyable and a much more manageable experience for you. And in the end, I'll give you some examples of what major organizations are doing some really great things with Twitter. So let's dive right into it. What is Twitter? Well, Twitter is a free social messaging and social networking platform that enables users to subscribe to and read other people's updates and to send their own updates out to those people that subscribe to their updates. These updates are text-based and up to, they're usually up to 140 characters. Actually, they can't exceed 140 characters in length. They're displayed on a user's profile page when the user logs in to Twitter, and they're delivered to other users who have subscribed to them. So you may have heard that Twitter is the new wave in marketing. Everybody seems to have a Twitter account these days. Demi Moore, Ashton Kutcher, ESPN, your local news. That might even be the reason that you're, you know, interested in Twitter at all. You might have even heard Twitter called microblogging over and over again. Well, there's a couple things that I want to clear up right away. Twitter is not marketing and Twitter is not microblogging. Ultimately, both of these are misnomers. Calling Twitter marketing and calling Twitter microblogging doesn't account for the more important aspects of Twitter. If you've ever attended a webinar of mine before, you'll hear a theme that's carried out um, throughout all of my social media webinars, and it applies to Twitter more than any of the, those combined. Twitter is essentially an online conversation. That's all it is. It's not marketing. It's not something crazy new like, microblogging that doesn't actually make a whole lot of sense since blogging is long form. Um, it's an online conversation and that's it. It's more like a forum than anything else, like a chat room with delayed gratification. You listen, you contribute content, you interact with other users, you engage in conversation. You're expected to participate in the Twitter online community and you'll want to in order to make your Twitter story a success. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to take a look at Twitter. Okay. Can you all see my screen and everything? Okay, I'm going to take that as yes. So what I'm going to do right now... Awesome. What I'm going to do right now is take you to Twitter. We're going to sign up for a new Twitter account. And if some of you already have Twitter accounts, bear with me. We're going to move through. That's pretty fast. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to get started. You'll go to twitter.com and hit get started and join.
All right, so you want to enter your name. For my name, I'll just put Fiza. I'll add my last name too. Now your username is something you actually want to think about. When you choose a username, you want to make sure that you keep it simple. It could be a nickname, a screen name that you've used on instant messenger programs in the past, remember instant messenger, um, or other social media sites, or simply your first and last name. Generally, it's best to avoid numbers and underscores, and this is a personal preference, but this is what I recommend. I generally recommend to avoid numbers and underscores because um, those tend to take away of the ease of other people interacting with you on Twitter. If it's difficult for them to remember or if it's difficult for them to type, especially because Twitter is an application that is so mobile, then you may not want to use it and then people may not want to interact with you if you have numbers or underscores. I have a couple friends who do use numbers and I can never get their numbers right. <laughs> and underscores are a little more difficult than just typing text into your phone when you're trying to respond to someone. So for our username, let me pick something. Let's use Fiza E. We'll put my password in. <laughs> it's calling me weak. <laughs> Do my email address. And it, whether or not I want updates, I don't. And create my account. I'm a little insulted that Twitter called me weak, but I won't take it personally, I don't think. Great. So this is the screen that you get once you've actually signed up for Twitter. You can see if your friends are on Twitter. You can use your Gmail, your Yahoo, your AOL, your Hotmail, or your MSN contacts. You can check and see if any of those people are using Twitter. However, I'm not going to check any of those right now. I'm going to skip this step. So after the internet thinks, it will bring us to the Twitter interface. Oh, actually, it will bring us to who, is, who it recommends for me to follow. So these are just recommendations generated by Twitter. Um, you don't have to follow any of these people. You can follow all of these people. Scroll through. Um, it's interesting, these suggestions that they have for me. I hope they don't suggest Paris Hil um, Prez Hilton. Um, but you can select all of those or select none of them. I'm going to select none of them and we're going to go to finish. Okay, so now we're looking at the Twitter interface. This is bare bones Twitter right here. So Right here is the area where you enter your posts or your tweets is what they're called in Twitter land. They can't be more than 140 characters. Um, your, your character delimited and if you go over, your tweets will still post but not the entire tweet. So we're looking at the Twitter interface right here. What you see up here is the home button, which is the screen we're looking at now. What you see here is your profile button. If you click on the profile button, you will see your profile as everyone else sees your profile. So it will show you the updates that you've posted and um, your photos, your following, and your followers, which we'll talk about in a little bit. We don't have anything right now, so we're going to go back to the home screen where we can stop waiting for the internet to think and just go up here to find people. Oops, I broke it. Let's refresh. The great thing about Twitter is that it's always growing, always changing, and it and the user base is growing exponentially. So it has its growing pains. If you know you're a new user to Twitter and you find that the site is acting funny or is down, it's not you. <laughs> At least you can take comfort in the fact that it isn't you. It's probably Twitter. We all put up with it because we love Twitter so much. It's best to just be patient with Twitter because it is growing. So these, this is how we can find people, and this is this area right here. You can find people on Twitter if you know someone's username, first or last name. You can find them on other networks, which is what we were looking at earlier by finding them through your contacts. You can invite someone to Twitter via email. If you have a particular friend that you want to join Twitter, a particular client that you want to join Twitter, 
and then there's this tab here where you can find the suggested users that were suggested to you um, when you started your account. Okay, and there's that. So after that, one of the most important things that you probably want to look at when you start your Twitter account is settings. Settings tab is your dashboard. It will tell you, um, it will allow you to manage your account. So here you have your name, your username. Your username is something you can change at any time. Um, you can change your name as many times as you want to. You can change it to anything that you want to. It's not like um, accounts such as like Flickr and YouTube when you're locked into your username. With Twitter, you can change your username all the time. Here you select your time zone. This is your URL. If you have a blog or a home page or a company website, you can enter it there. This is your one-line bio where you can enter a little bit about yourself or a quote, whatever you like, your location, and this box is to protect your updates. I, I don't really recommend protecting your updates because only the people that uh, you approve can see your updates, and it really takes away from the nature of Twitter, which is that online conversation and that ability to talk to anybody and converse with anybody that's on Twitter. So if you need to use that, um, if it's something that you're using for personal purposes, it's probably the only way I would recommend protecting your updates. This account area right here under the settings tab is the most important area, I think. You really want to fill out this information. You want to have a URL. You want to have a bio. You want to have a location. You want to make sure that you have a name here. Um, it allows you to have more credibility on Twitter, and it makes people um, more likely to follow you and be engaged with you when they see that you're a real person. The next important tab after that is the picture tab. And I know I'm skipping around, but I'll go back. Um, I think it's really important to add a real picture of yourself. Um, or a real picture, or some sort of picture, some sort of graphical representation. Um, these little icons over here, as you can see, these brown icons are what show up when you don't have a picture. And that's sort of a sign to people in the Twitter community that you're not really interested in participating, you're not really invested in the Twitter community, and, um, and it's just not something you want to start off with. I think our internet's going slow, so I apologize for this formatting issues. Or maybe it's Twitter. We could blame Twitter, too. I'm okay with that. So here, what we're looking at is a broken version of the Twitter picture tab. What you want to do is upload a picture that can serve as an icon for your Twitter account. I've always used a picture of my face. You can use a picture of whatever you want, but I would suggest using a picture of yourself. So that's what we're looking at here. Let's go back to password. I think password's pretty self-explanatory. It's where you can change your password. That's the only thing you can do in that tab. And let's go to devices. One of the really great values of Twitter is that you can use Twitter anywhere. Um, you don't have to be sitting in front of your computer. Um, you don't have to be um, tethered to any particular um, interface in order to do it. So one of the really great things about Twitter is that you can um, set your phone up at any sort of phone. It doesn't have to be a smartphone or an iPhone or a G1 or anything like that. It can be just a standard cell phone. As long as you're able to send and receive text messages, you can set this up on your phone. And so you would enter your mobile phone number here. You can be in any country. It doesn't matter. Um, and then you'll follow the prompts that follow after that. I would set up my mobile phone here, but it's already set up on my other account, which I'll show you um, later on. But um, the prompts are pretty easy. You just follow what it says. This says, it's OK for Twitter to send text messages to my phone. You can click that, yes or no. Um, it depends. But that's one of the really great things about Twitter is that you can be anywhere posting to Twitter using your mobile phone. Okay, notices. This is where you decide how much you want to be bothered by Twitter. Um, if you want to receive text messages for tweets, if you want to receive um, emails when people start following you. So in order to keep the Twitter noise down, the more and more that you use Twitter, you'll probably want to pay attention to the notices tab. Okay, so here we go. We have the option to 
be nudged by Twitter if you haven't updated in 24 hours. You have the option for the replies, which we'll talk about later. Show the replies to the people that you're following. Show all the replies or show no replies. We'll talk a little bit more about replies later. Um, but basically, replies enable you to take part in the conversation a little better. Um, but you don't have to re you don't have to subscribe to everybody's replies if you're not subscribed to the people that they're replying to. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Replies get a little bit confusing. So here you can receive emails when people follow you and you get new followers. You can get an email. You can get e messages via email for direct um, messages when someone sends you a message directly and you can subscribe to the newsletter. And the last tab here is the design tab, which allows you to customize what your Twitter page looks like. A lot of people that we'll look at later have um, very customized um, Twitter layouts and Twitter home pages, but you have the ability to do simple um, adjustments, design adjustments to your home page. And Twitter gives you some themes. You have the ability to change your background image, change the design colors and stuff like that. I'm sorry, this page looks nuts. All right, so that's that part. So let's go back to the Twitter home screen, which is the same as hitting the Twitter button. You can hit the Twitter logo. And so we're now we're looking at the Twitter interface. This is what you see when you log in. Okay, now what I'm going to do here is go to my Twitter account so I can show you a little more about how this works because right now we haven't followed anyone on this account. We don't have any followers. Um, so it will make it a little bit difficult for me to show you um, what those, those sidebars mean in practice. So we'll go to my Twitter account. This is a really good time to get a cup of coffee, you know, when you're waiting to sign into your Twitter account. <laughs> if I drank coffee, I would get some. Here we go, we're looking at Twitter's home page for me. So we're going to talk about this sidebar here. So what we see here is the home tab, just like up here. We see the people that I'm following, the people that are following me, and how many times I've updated or how many updates I've posted. So what we want to do first is look here. There's this at sign and my name. So what the heck does that mean? Well, let's click on that and we'll see. Okay, these are all the people who have mentioned me in their tweets. They're talking about, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> they're, they're mentioning me in their tweets, and all they have to do in order to mention me in their tweets is to put the at sign before my Twitter name. So here we have a couple snarky posts. <laughs> <laughs> discussing Twitter that are directed toward me. As you can see, this they can th my screen name with the at sign can precede another user's tweet or post, or it can be included anywhere in the body. As long as I click here, I'll know who's talking about me directly. So we've got some that are preceding with that and some that are mentioning it here. All right, so those are the... the replies, we, we call them at replies. They used to say that right there, and now it says your name. Direct messages are when somebody can message you directly and talk to you outside of this public interface in Twitter. So let's say, let's say right here, Maggie wanted to talk to me, and I wanted to talk to Maggie. What I'm going to do is, because I'm following Maggie and Maggie's following me, I have the ability to direct message her. And I will talk more about that a little bit later. 
But so I'm going to say, I want to message Maggie outside of Twitter, outside of the public interface. So I'm going to say, hey, Maggie. And then I'm going to send that to her. You don't have some of the... Uh... Now that's going to, that's not going to post on my public profile. That's going to post just to Maggie. And only Maggie's going to be able to see that direct message. And so that's how that tab works. If it worked. All right. All right. So here we have the favorites. If you really like something that someone posted and you want to bookmark it, this is where you use the favorites tab. And so these people have said things that I think are particularly funny. I actually didn't favorite some of these. They look strange, but these most of these are things that I've put a little star next to next to these updates, and I can always access them and look at them and laugh at them later in my favorites. Now, there are other uses for favorites other just things for favorite things are cute. For example, here, this is my softball team, and I wanted to bookmark this link. Instead of bookmarking this link in my browser on my computer, I've instead just started, and I always have access to it. Okay, hold on one second. Okay, I'm going to take care of the odd, the echo, because this is driving me crazy, and I see it's driving you guys crazy. If anyone's not muted right now, would you please mute your phone? And if you have the go to meeting screen, you can just find yourself in the attendee list and click that phone button to mute it. All right, let me know how the echo is. Anyone still hearing the massive echo that we were just hearing? I still hear the echo, though. OK. Um, everybody do me a favor and mute your phones right now. Take that little icon that's next to your name, the attendee list. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute everyone. I hate to do that to you guys, but the um, feedback is is pretty bad. So I'll I'll unmute you guys at the at the completion of the webinar, so you can ask all your questions. I really apologize, but it's getting a bit unbearable. Okay, so that is the favorites tab. Now I'm going to skip over this box right here for a second, which is the search box, and we're going to take a look over here at the trending topics, which we'll look at very briefly because we'll talk about those in more detail as well. Right here are basically the top trends on Twitter. Um, they're the things that people are talking about the most. What's really cool is Texas is one of them. Woohoo! But I think it probably has something to do with something not so good. But anyway. These are the top topics right now on Twitter, and there's a way that if you're talking about these topics that you can be included in this topic roundup. So let's click on, let's click on Texas for the sake of it. We'll click on Texas, and we'll see everybody who has mentioned Texas in their tweets recently, and you can see there's quite a few. So you'll see lots of people talking about Texas. That's pretty cool. All right. So now that we've discussed in a little bit of detail um, what's going on here, up here at this area and up here at this area, let's get in a little more to how to use Twitter. First of all, let's say you've just started um, using Twitter and you need to find some friends. Well, there are a couple different ways that you can find friends. First, you can start by using search.twitter.com. Search.twitter.com is available through a separate website or it's available right here where we, where we have this little bar and where we have Texas. So let's search for Houston. Okay, sorry, that's my, that's my feed of my friends. So we'll search for Houston right here. The website's still loading. All right, so we have Houston. We'll do a search. 
see what happens. This is everybody who's talking about Houston right now. Hmm, let's see. So let's see. Any of these people look interesting to me? Anything that they're saying looks interesting to me? Um, I'd say this one. Cool. Let's see what she's about. Okay, awesome. I love what she's saying. She looks like she's really engaged in conversation. I want to follow her. Okay, I'm going to follow her. I'm going to click follow. And then I'm following her. Easy peasy. That's how I found her, by searching for Houston. Maybe I want to follow everybody who's mentioning Houston, so all I have to do is go to their profiles and click follow. Now there's some other tools that you can use to find people if you don't want to necessarily use that tool. There's another one called TweetScan.com, and it's the same sort of thing. You can use um, Twitter search, you can use TweetScan, and you can search for topics. Now, I'm a vegetarian, so let's search for vegetarian. Great. Looks like a bunch of awesome vegetarians. This person, hmm, not so sure about that. This person says that, great, he, lo he hates plants. He's my best friend. I'm going to check on his, or click on his profile and see if he's somebody I want to follow based on the topics that we're interested in. Brings me to his tweet. I'll click directly on his profile. Man, I just love what he's saying and following him. He lives in Miami. Maybe I can go visit. Okay, so that's another resource, tweet scan. And one more. This one is good to use when you have followers already, but you're looking for more people to follow. Go to whoshouldifollow.com. Enter your Twitter username, and it will give me suggestions on who I should follow. Clearly, I should follow the Houstonist, and it will tell me why. It will say, similar to these people that you already follow, Discovery Green, Fresh Art, Space Taker. Um, a couple other people that I should follow. His icon's huge. I probably won't follow him. So that'll give you an idea of people that are similar based on this, um, this site's um, algorithm or however it's determined by this site that these people are, that the Houstonist is similar to these people and it will base it on people that I already follow and it suggests people that it thinks I should follow based on people I already follow. Alright, so I think we already talked about this a little bit, but how you add friends on Twitter is, and we already, we already sort of looked at that, um, in order to subscribe to someone's Twitter updates, you only need to add them as a friend by clicking follow, and that's the button that's on the user's profile, so let's go do that again. And that's called following someone, so I'm going to follow her, say follow. And after my unborn children are in college, it will follow. All right, so now we have a relationship that's a following relationship. However, following and followers is not a reciprocal relationship. You might choose to follow a certain user, but they don't have to elect to follow you, nor do you have to follow every user that follows you. Some people follow everyone that follow them. Some people follow only people that they know in real life. Some people only follow users from their city or organization. It's really up to you who you choose to follow and who you choose not to. Um, I see a question here that says, should you follow your competitors? My advice would be, yes, follow your competitors. Why wouldn't you want to follow your competitors to see what they're doing? See what they're up to and see how you can do them one better. <laughs> so, like we talked about earlier, so this is a follower-following relationship. Right now, I've followed her, but she's not following me yet. And that's fine. She doesn't need to ever follow me. I've made the decision that I want to follow her updates. For direct messages, like we talked about earlier, you can only send direct messages to people with whom your follower-following relationship is mutual or when someone follows you. 
So direct messages allow you to communicate in the more private arena, so those, those updates don't ever post to your page. Let's take a look at my page, because I sent that message to Maggie earlier. I didn't post anywhere. Nobody's looking at this post that I sent to Maggie. However, when I go back to the home page and I check my direct messages, I hope that Maggie will have written me back. If she didn't, I'll cry. Maybe I'll just click on it twice. Twice is good. There we go. <laughs> so there we go. I got something back from Maggie because she's my follower. And I follow her and she follows me. So we have that mutual relationship so we can send direct messages to each other through Twitter. So your direct messages area right here is sort of like your inbox. Um, it's like an inbox like you have on email or with Facebook, but it's for Twitter. And yes, even in your direct messages, you're still limited to 140 characters. So now here we are. We understand Twitter. We know how to find people on Twitter. We know how to um, update our profile and make it look snazzy and, um, and, you know, enter our website, blah, blah, blah. We are all set to go, right? Well, what the heck do we tweet about? Well, the next thing you do with Twitter is you tweet, like I just said. New posts on Twitter are informally referred to as tweets, and anyone that subscribes to them will see them. They're also available in the public Twitter search. So if you're posting at on your profile, which is that little box at the top with the 140 character limit, anything you post there will be in the, in your, on your public profile, and anyone will be able to find it, and it gets indexed in Google search as well. Um, so what are you supposed to post then? Well, the bottom line on posting is just to be interesting. Um, use yourself as a gauge. Is it something that you'd want to read? If it is something that you'd want to read, go ahead and post it. But try to avoid tweets that are only of interest to an audience of one, and that audience being you. If it's interesting to someone, out more, if, if it's interesting to more than just you, go ahead and post it. I think that's a good gauge to think about when you're posting something or when you're tweeting to Twitter. All right, so I have a couple of do's and don'ts for you when it comes to posting or tweeting on Twitter. You definitely want to engage in conversation. I'll show you in a second how to use that at replies or that at your username area right here um, effectively, but it's the easiest way to talk on, to people on Twitter and to get them talking to you. Even without using that feature, though, you, should, you can post questions for your followers to answer, and when they reply, you can engage them in a dialogue. Let's, do, let's do, go ahead and do that right now. Let's see, who do I want to talk to? Well, Maggie's good. Let's talk to Maggie. Let's talk to also my co-worker, Caitlin. All right, I'll hit reply, and hopefully they'll say something back because I asked them a question and I directed it immediately to them. Now, when both of them log into Twitter, they'll see in their at username area that I've said something to both of them, and hopefully they'll reply to me. So let's check and see. I know there was only five seconds ago, but I'm a bit impatient. It'll probably take ten years for the website to load anyway. <laughs> Um, that's one of my coworkers as well, and that's Caitlin. She even, she, um, she replied before I even said anything to her. That's great. And, <laughs> and everyone knows I'm on a webinar. <laughs> Let's try again. Let's see if anyone responded to the last thing I said. Ooh, thanks, Maggie. <laughs> and when you do a webinar and all your, on Twitter and all your coworkers are on Twitter, they have they play really fun games with you. So these are all the people that have been talking and mentioning me. All right. The next thing that you can do is promote your blog, your events, or your causes. 
One function of Twitter is to keep your followers abreast of the latest activities that your organization is involved in. Twitter is a really great way to get the word out and boost attendance at your events. This is where the viral nature of Twitter really takes hold. It's putting your information out there and getting your followers to spread the word for you. For example, we'll use my uh, webinar as an example. I tweeted about my Twitter webinar. So if I go back to my home page and check to see if anybody else did any tweeting about my webinar for me, let's see if they mentioned my name, let's see if they took it and ran with it. We've got a couple people here talking about my Twitter webinar. Twitter webinar. Awesome. This is the point of Twitter. One of the points, anyway, is getting your message out there and getting other people to help you spread that message. Another do is definitely share information on Twitter. If you see something you like, something that you think would be of interest to your followers, even if it has nothing to do with you or what you do or what you're about, no big deal. Tweet it. We're all real, multidimensional, multifaceted people. We have many, many interests. So your followers do too. So if you remember the rule of being interesting, you'll keep your followers happy, interested in what you're tweeting with the information you provide, even if it's not directly related to you and what you do. Another big Twitter thumbs up is promoting and quoting other people. If you've noticed that someone you're following has said something amazing, pass it along to your followers. Do the same thing that you want people to do with your tweets. Um, I'll discuss Twitter etiquette for doing that in a little bit, but don't hesitate to repost their tweet for all of your followers to enjoy. I'll show you how to do that later. And above all, keep it positive. Don't start fights on Twitter. This information is available for the public to see. That's anybody who has access to the internet. They can find you. Twitter is not some obscure device anymore. It's mainstream and you're easy to find on Twitter. So if you find that something is being said about you or your organization that's false or it makes you angry, handle it professionally and calmly. If you can't handle it via direct messages, try to handle it the best you can in a public forum and try to take the discussion. If it's too much for 140 characters, which it often is, try and take it um, offline if you can by exchanging email addresses. Okay, some Twitter don'ts. Don't make your Twitter stream completely automated, such as scheduling tweets, only posting content from um, an RSS feed. You really need to watch the automation and only do that in moderation. Now I say this because there are many tools out there that can make Twitter almost entirely hands-off for you, which sounds like a great idea because it means you have to do nothing, right? Wrong. I'm telling you, just like drugs, just say no. This is a trap that you do not want to fall into early on. When it starts becoming a bulletin board for your endeavors and not an engaged conversation, you've completely missed the point of Twitter and you lost credibility. You don't want that to happen to you. So start off by using Twitter in a conversational manner and you won't go wrong. Don't tweet about yourself or your mundane daily activities all the time. Now, a little people who are a bit ex more experienced in Twitter know that they've seen that I'm brushing my teeth. What should I eat for dinner? I'm thinking about steak for dinner. No, I had steak last night. Those sorts of people are probably the people that you're really going to be interested in following. And they may be great people. They may be have great things to share with you, but they're talking about things that are ultimately going to turn a lot of people off. So a good rule for every um, for every tweet that you have or that you post about yourself, your organization, or your cause, you should post about three tweets recognizing, promoting, or talking with someone else. If you you can keep your Twitter stream me focused, but not me dominated. And then the last don't is. Don't tweet so heavily that you're going to annoy those people that follow you or that you're going to fill up their tweet stream. So when I'm talking about tweet stream, I'm talking about when I log in to Twitter and I look at my home screen. What do I see? I don't want to see the same person, you know, five, six times in a row unless they just won the lottery or um, they were 
elected president of some country. I don't really care to see that information over and over again. As you can see, I follow some pretty good tweeters, Twitterers, whatever you want to call them. I don't see a whole lot of repeat going on here, and I certainly don't see um, a stream of one after the other tweets from anyone. So there's a tendency in the beginning to tweet every little thing that comes into your head immediately. But if you do, you're going to dominate someone's home page or many people's home pages or their treat tweet stream, which is this area right here, with all of your tweets. And really, I don't think there's a faster way to annoy your followers than that. You'll see your follower numbers drop, 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 drop if you start doing that. So tweet in moderation. And now I know what I said earlier about automation of tweets. I know that and scheduling tweets allow you to um, better manage your tweets. However, that takes the human component of it out of it altogether, and so I would rather you, you learn to use Twitter in a way where you can self-moderate um, the amount of tweets that you post. All right, so now we're going to talk about a little bit of tw Twitter insider language because, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's pretty confusing about Twitter um, because it can be, I mean, People on Twitter use their own secret language sometimes. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, that secret language. So let's take a look at my Twitter stream right here. Let's refresh. You're going to see that at symbol, and we talked about that at symbol. That at symbol followed by a person's username is just the symbol that Twitter uses in order to indicate that someone's talking to you or talking about you. That's it. In Twitter land, they're called replies. That's all. So let's see, who is the last person that talked to me? <laughs> well, I appreciate the moral support. This is one of my coworkers. And so right here, if I hover over her tweet in this um, area, it'll have that little star icon, which I told you was your favorite, which would end up here, or this little arrow. And if you hover over it, it will say reply to. So I click on that the at symbol and her name's uh, pop up and then I say what do I want to say back <laughs> awesome reply that's it I just talked back to her so that's not too hard right well a couple of other things we want to look at is the hashtag or the pound sign or in some circles, the poundy sign. This is the symbol that allows your tweet to be easily indexed in Twitter search, which over here is the Twitter search area, and thus easily found. So, like we said earlier, these are the top trends on Twitter. However, some of these people have just mentioned these names. Some of these people have actually used the pound sign to make sure that their post or their tweet can be found under that topic. So let's go to Tea Party. All right, so we've got a lot of people here using the hashtag, and they've tagged their, um, their mention of Tea Party with this hashtag. That allows you to easily search for this term by using this hashtag. So if you click on this hashtag, you will then see everything that's been tagged with Tea Party. It just allows you to easily search for things um, within anyone's Twitter stream based on a particular topic. It's a really good thing to use when you want to do something like this. Um, let's see. There you go. So I've, t I've tagged that with a hashtag with Texas. Now if I go over here to the trending topic with Texas, it should show up when it shows up. <laughs> There's a lot of people talking about Texas right now. There we are. And so now anybody can see anything 
related to this hashtag of Texas. And people always put funny hashtags and hashtags that don't necessarily end up in this trending topic area, but allows them to be easily searched. So next, next we're going to see the RT and the HT. So right now I'm going to search for RT. So you're going to see RT quite a bit. All RT means is retweet. This is where you give props where props are due. So if something, someone says something really awesome that you want to repost, you retweet it or RT because you only have 140 characters. You have to conserve space. So this allows you to post their original tweet while giving credit where credit is due. So let's see. I'm going to go to, actually I'm just going to go to my home page and see something that I think is amazing or something that I particularly like. Okay, let's see. Okay, I like what she says. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it. And what I did was just a control C. I'm going to paste it. And so I'm about to run out of my limit here. So watch what I do. I'm going to do retweet at so she knows I'm talking about her. I'm going to shorten this a little bit so I can fit it all in. That's it. Awesome. What I'm going to do is update. Now she is going to see that I have thought that what she said was awesome. And she's going to see that I did that because I retweeted it. And it's going to show up over here in her at username area. So that's a really great, great way if you want to help someone promote an event, if you want to help an idea spread, um, or if you just think something is, you know, damn funny and you want everybody to see it. Go ahead and do that with attribution to the person who said it. HT is almost the same. HT stands for hat tip. All right, now hat type, does, hat type apparently means something. I'm not sure what it, HT is here, but let's see if we can find an HT hat tip. Here we go. This person right here. He's credited Bob Seska, who may or may not be on Twitter, but he put a hat tip. Often hat tips come at the end of a tweet, um, like this one. Great example right here, where he says he may do this, he may do that, but he got the information. It may not be a direct... Um, a direct tweet or, or dir and the exact tweet that the person said, but it may be the concept, or that person may have just tipped them off to this information, but you want to credit that person with giving you the information because it's sort of like link backs on blogs. You just want to spread the good karma around. So this is a hat tip to this person, and so everybody knows that he got this information from this person. And so maybe, you know, if people find out that he got this information from D.L. Norman, maybe people are going to follow D.L. Norman. It's just spreading the good stuff around. All right, so the next one that you might see is OH. And according to the Postal Service, OH stands for Ohio, but not in the Twitterverse. In the Twitterverse, this abbreviation is short for overheard, and it happens when anyone hears something worth sharing and wants to repost it or retweet it, but without attribution. So let's see if we can find a good example of that. Lots of O's. see what we can find here. It's usually something that someone has said in person um, that's probably going to be embarrassing to the person who, <laughs> who said it or that you can't attribute it to anyone. I'm trying to find a good example here. But it's mostly O. <laughs> Okay. Well, I'm going to put an OH up here so you see what it looks like. Because one of my coworkers just said this. So I don't really want to call her out on 
that comment necessarily. So I'll just put it up there and say OH. And that's it. That's all you do for an OH. So if you think that all these people on Twitter are talking about Ohio, it's unlikely. Okay, the next thing I want to tell you about is tinyurl is good and trim. Okay, I'll show you what these look like because it's easier than, than saying them out loud. So we have tinyurl, we have is.gd, and we have tr.im. If you see those things in a Twitter, um, in your Twitter feed, and you're, you know, you're thinking, oh my god, that must be spam, I click on that and I'll get this virus, it's going to affect my computer and my whole family. No, no, it's not going to do that. Those aren't spam links. They're merely sites that allow you to shorten a URL that you want to share with your Twitter community. Like I said earlier, let's face it, 140 characters is not a whole heck of a lot of real estate. So if you want to tweet that incredibly long link to that story you really loved on The Onion or some blog post or something like that, you're going to want to shorten it to conserve space. So, I'll show you how this works. Let's go to All right. Let's choose this story for sake of simplicity. We've got a long link there. We'll copy this link. And if we want to just put that right here, we have already used up about 70 characters. We can't do that. That's too much. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose something like tinyurl.com, paste it in here, and you can make a custom alias if you want to. So let's say Mexico and you can make your tiny URL. You can do the same thing with is good. Compress. Same with trim. I don't want to send it straight to Twitter, but you can. Oops. Neat. Right here on is good, you've got your new shortened URL. You can copy that and you can paste it here. Awesome. Look how much we saved. A lot. So we can say whatever we want to now because we have so much room. Same here. Okay, that's not available, so I can't have that. Can't have Mexico. Sadness. Same here. Now we have a shortened URL. We can use that here. Easy. Now you can include your commentary. You can tell people what that link is actually about to see if they want to Twitter um, or click on it and maybe retweet it to their friends and followers. And here we've got a tiny URL created as well. It really just is up to you, but those are some programs you can use to shorten URLs. And then you're going to see a lot of strange terminology on Twitter, things like tweeple, tweets, tweet up. These concepts, believe it or not, are entirely invented by the Twitter community at large. They're not propagated by the guys at Twitter at all. Um, they're, they're entirely invented. And sometimes it can get really confusing. I found a really good resource when you're in doubt in order to sort of make sense of the madness. It's called Twictionary. And it's T W I C Shinary dot pbwiki.com. And here you can look up anything. So let's say you have no idea what a tweet up is. Let's find ourselves tweet up. Twitter plus meetup, a gathering of folks based on a Twitter conversation, often impromptu. Great. Now I'm in the know. I know what a tweet up is. So something like this can be a really great resource for you as you're um, navigating the Twitter waters so that you understand what people are saying. All right. So next, there's a lot of really great Twitter tools out there for you to use. Now, you can always log into the website if you want to and check it this way. But 
what's really great about Twitter is that you don't have to do that. Um, that's, you can customize the way you use it, where you use it, and when you use it. And it, because Twitter comes with almost no instructions, it allows you to make it fit your needs and your purposes. Um, I'm not sure what that noise is, but whoever's got the dog barking in the background, would you mind muting? Um, okay, so one of, there's a couple different kinds of tools that you can use. There's desktop tools, there's mobile tools, um, there's posting photo tools, and then there's feed tools. So for the desktop tools, there are a lot of really super great ones. And one of the first ones I'm going to show you is actually TweetDeck. It's a really popular one. Let me find it here for you. Here it is. These are downloadable desktop tools for you to use. And I think it's over here. Okay, so this may look like madness, but it's really not. So over here, you have all your friends, you, and that's what um, your tweet stream looks like right now. You have your replies or anything that has, you know, included your name in that at symbol. I have groups for my coworkers. I have groups for, you know, other people. I have groups for direct messages. You can set up these groups as you wish. I have groups for my girlfriends. I have groups for Houston. Um, and it allows you to really keep up a lot better with the people that you're following by organizing them into groups and keeping up with them via TweetDeck. Because sometimes the more people you follow, the more overwhelming it can get. And classifying them into different groups allows you to just quickly glance at any group and see um, you know, what's going on with your friends. So that's one, that's TweetDeck. Another one that I can show you is called Twirl. Twirl's going to look a lot like your um, login page. Apparently I need a new version. But Twirl's going to look a lot like your Twitter stream. Um, do I have the option of later? <laughs> Um, Twirl's going to look a lot like your Twitter feed, but you have a lot of um, capabilities via Twirl that um, you don't necessarily have from the Twitter interface. So what's going to happen is you're going to have a stream right here, and I'm not sure why it's not updating right now. But you're going to have a feed, just like you have when you log into your Twitter screen, and you're going to see everybody um, that you subscribe to and you can favorite tweets, you can reply directly, you have a lot of options. Not really sure why it's being fussy with me. But it is. But twirl is spelled like that. Weird, but spelled like that. So that's another option of a tool that you can use. There are a couple of other options like Hootsuite is an option which allows you to manage multiple accounts. So let's say you have an account for work and a personal account. Hootsuite is um, something that you can use in order to manage both of them. And I'll show you that one. And then there are different clients for Mac, such as Eventbox, which I think right now is a paid beta application, and Nambu, which is free. This is Hootsuite. And right now, this is free as well. And then there's Nambu for Max. OK, while those are loading, this is Nambu for Max. You can also use this on your iPhone. And then there's also Eventbox which is a paid application that aggregates more than just Twitter. It also uses, um, it also aggregates Facebook, Flickr, your other social media profiles. Right now it's $15. Okay, so, but not all the fun is had by your desktop when it comes to Twitter. There are some really awesome mobile tools that you can use as well. And depending on your phone, most of these tools are free or at a very small cost. Um, there's, there's most, Oh, there are a lot of tools for um, 
iPhones and probably the most tools are for iPhones, but there are tools for BlackBerry. Some of the tools include Twitterific, um, Tweety, Twitter Phone, those are for iPhone, um, and Tiny Tweet and Twitterberry for Blackberries. Um, next, there's a little there's a couple applications for actually posting photos to Twitter. And you have to register with these separately as well, but it connects directly to your Twitter account. And the most popular one right now is TwitPic, and it will post a picture to your Twitter profile. And sorry, it will post a link to your Twitter profile to this picture. So let's take a look at this dude who's sipping on a margarita or something. Something. So this this went this link went to his Twitter profile. Let's take a look at this in action. Let's just look up TwitPic and Twitter. All right, so this is how it will show up. You've got people here posting Twit pics, and this person says, "I'll never get tired of indulging in one of the best restaurants on earth." His Twit pic has posted to his Twitter stream. And I love that restaurant so much. I'm jealous. And so all of his followers can click on that link and see that he's super in, in and out. Cool. There's another one that I think is exclusively for iPhones, and it's called Natuba. Let me check that one out for you. All right, so while that loads, this is Natuba. And it's another version of TwitPic, but I do think it's only for iPhones. All right, so the last thing I want to talk to you about in terms of a Twitter tool is Twitter feed. Now, earlier I advised you against automatic and automated posts to your Twitter account. Well, this is one instance in which it's OK. And I'll tell you why. If your other social media profiles have an RSS feed that you can access, like Flickr or your blog, you can use Twitter feed to automatically send those updates straight to your Twitter stream. However, this, like I said, is the only form of automation that I personally would recommend. It's a really great way to pull your content from other social networks and get it in front of your Twitter followers, but be wary of completely automating your Twitter stream. You can. Uh, I use Twitter feed to um, to feed to my um, Twitter stream, my blog posts, and Flickr. But that's it. I don't write blog posts every day, and I don't take pictures every day, and I participate in the community every day as a real person. But this is something you can set up so that you don't always have to go through and say, I posted a new photo, or I posted a new blog post. You can just have this feed to that immediately. But don't make your Twitter stream all a feed. I advise against that very strongly because people aren't going to want to engage with you. All right, so those are some Twitter tools. Now, who do I think is doing Twitter right? And I say right in quotations because there's no right way to necessarily do Twitter, but because it's so um, personal and you can really do Twitter the way that you want to. But these are some people who I think are making really great use of Twitter. Now, the very first one is sort of the hallmark of doing Twitter right in the corporate arena, and that's Zappos. This is the CEO of Zappos, um, which is an online store that sells shoes and purses and stuff for your home and things like that. Um, they're very based on, they're very focused on customer service and really great customer service and the Twitter interaction that they have really shows. So the CEO um, from Zappo is only one of the few people that's using Twitter for those reasons and as you can see he's using it in, a, in very different ways. Here he has you know meeting with dinner with what he's you know who he, one of his friends talking about meeting Asians. Um, here's one where he posted a twit pic. Here's one where he's talking about his flight to New York. Now he's not just talking about Zappos related things. He's talking about everything under the sun. He's, he's making himself a real person all while 
um, considering to or continuing to represent that Zappos brand. Here he had fun hanging out with Brooke Burke. Um, I'm guessing most people wouldn't complain about that. Um, retweeting someone, Gary V, who's a prominent um, wine connoisseur. Um, so he's using it in a variety of ways. Um, I, know, I know he follows quite a few people now. He follows almost 400,000 people. But back in the day, he used to reply to everyone that replied to him. Um, and he's, he's really great about paying attention to what's going on on Twitter and keeping people posted. Um, so that's one. Another one that's been really great um, in using Twitter for customer service is Comcast. And um, probably your insights curled when you heard Comcast because a lot of people have really awful experiences with Comcast. Well, Comcast probably figured that out and decided, well, we're going to take our customer service to a different level, and they became involved with Twitter. As you can see, he uses Com or his, he uses his Twitter in a completely different way because his um, his tweets are mostly replies to people about the issues that they're having with Comcast. And you know how he probably finds these people. He probably just goes into search and searches for Comcast. And that's how he finds people on Twitter who are talking about Comcast. So he's very, very engaged with the community um, and trying to assist in you know, making sure he can take care of their Comcast woes. Um, a couple of airlines really do a great job as well with Twitter and interacting with people and putting information out there as well. One of them is Southwest Air. Um, Southwest Air does a really great job here of interacting with people, talking about what they're doing, retweeting and giving props. I mean, could you imagine if Southwest Air was following you and you had some sort of um, some sort of idea that you really wanted to push or some sort of thing that was um, very important to you and you really needed to get exposure around it, having this person retweet you with 22,000 followers is awesome. So that's kind of how they use it. They use it in a really good way um, as well. And um, they actually talk about Comcast and Zappos right here. But um, they do a lot of responding with the corresponding with the community and posting twit pics and updates about what's going on with Southwest um, service and things like that. Another one that's doing a good job as well, another airline, is JetBlue. Yikes. I'm just, I think we're having internet trouble, so I just want to make sure that everything loads. Okay, so we'll go back to JetBlue there. And JetBlue is just another example of um, an airline or an organization that's really doing a really great job with Twitter. Um, as you can see, they're participating in the conversation. Now, what you haven't seen in any of these feeds is people just posting stuff about themselves. Like here, for example, here's one about JetBlue. Weather and winds in the Northeast may be causing delays or cancellations. Hey, that may be of interest to the people who are following JetBlue. They're not just talking about themselves. They're doing a lot of interaction. They're posting information that's useful to people who are following them. And this is important whether you're using Twitter in a personal or an organizational or corporate, corporate manner. Um, you want to make sure that you're posting stuff that's interesting to the people who are following you. You know who's following you and you know um, generally why they're following you and, and um, what sort of updates 
are of interest to people. So make sure that you are posting things that are interesting. Now granted, you're always going to post something that's interesting to no one, but try to keep those to a minimum. Sometimes my posts are only important and only make sense to me. That's fine, but if I did that all the time, no one would follow me. I wouldn't follow me, that's for sure. Um, a couple of other ones that I'll show you real quickly. Our Whole Foods. Whole Foods is doing also a really good job of interacting with people um, who are talking about Whole Foods, um, who are talking about different products. Their st stream here is almost completely dedicated to responses, and so that's cool too. And then two more I want to show you. This one is Popeye's Chicken. And what they're sort of known for is their really funny, entertaining responses to tweets. Um, I'm not sure what Allie Jane said. If I want to find out, I can just click right here and find out what she said first. She said, cool or dumb, when I see Popeye's commercials, they totally make me want to stop being a vegetarian and eat Popeye's. Only Popeye's. So they said to Allie Jane in response, they probably said something about chicken. They said, you know, we can keep the relationship a secret. What happens at Popeye's stays at Popeye's. Shh, it's Victoria's Secret, too. So they're really known for their, their cheeky, funny responses to people's um, tweets. And then the last one I want to show you is the huge coffee conglomerate of Starbucks. They follow a lot of people and they do a lot of interaction as well. Here they are talking a lot. Here they are sharing some knowledge about their seasonal coffee um, and taking pictures using TwitPic and things like that. So what I really want you to take away from all this is that Twitter is new, Twitter is always changing, and Twitter is growing exponentially. People are defining and redefining the way they use Twitter all the time. All you have to do to use Twitter is to be patient with yourself and be patient with Twitter. As you've seen, Twitter tries your patience. Um, but in the end, you know, we don't know what we'd really do without Twitter because it's brought conversations to a totally new level. As long as you remember that it's another form of talking to people and sharing information online, you'll do just fine on Twitter. So, do you have any questions? I have to unmute everyone, so hold on a second. <laughs> so you can do your, um, your uh, online version of stretching your legs. Ask me any questions that you have. Does anyone have any questions about Twitter? I see that there are some in the chat. Um, let me go up and answer some of those. All right, Shivani says, once you're logged into the account, how do you later get that screen where it goes through your email account to see who is on Twitter? Okay, I'll show you. I found it. Oh, you did? Okay, awesome. Yeah, it was under fine people. I just didn't see it. Yeah, that's where it is. All right, let's see other questions. I answered that one. Mm, I don't actually love Lance from NSYNC. I prefer JT. Who doesn't? Um, and then Caitlin said that TwitPic is built into Twitterific and Twitter phone, iPhone apps with no additional registration. So that's good information for you iPhone users. I am not one of them, unfortunately. Um, how do you find the search bar? I don't have one of those on the right-hand side of my screen. If you don't have one of those, then all you have to do is go to search.twitter.com and it's there. I know that they're making a lot of improvements to Twitter profiles and they're sort of rolling them out. So if you don't have one there, you will. But until then, this is the, the Twitter search interface, search.twitter.com. Let's see. 
All right. Thanks, Todd. All right. Thanks, Does Todd. anybody have any Does more questions for me that I didn't answer during the presentation? Because if you don't, then I will conclude this little webinar. Um, thank you all for attending, and I will probably be hosting another webinar in the next few months to address a little more advanced usage of Twitter so that some of you um, more intermediate and advanced users will be a little more satiated. And if you are trying to get a hold of me or anything like that, here's my contact information at email and phone. Okay, well, thank you all for attending. I appreciate it. And email me if you have any questions. Thanks, everybody.